I'll give that my guy. That's my instructor. Right there. Isn't that uh, Mr. Chris's husband or something? No, that's, that's Joe. That's my range instructor. He wants me to drive uh, out on the range, and I keep avoiding him. So someday I'm going to have to go and hop out of Pop in one of those trucks and do some straight line backing and oh, straight line. Thing. Yeah, that's what I told them. I'm like, I, I, I think I can do straight line. I think I can do that. And uh, I'm, I'm not fiance, you said right? Did she? And uh, like whenever we'd go to shut down at some truck stops, she would always ask. She was, yeah, I have a truck with you. Yeah. Uh, she would keep asking, like, why do you always gotta back into the hardest spot? Right. So how long have you been driving? This year will be five years I've been driving trucks. I feel like I've taken time off between uh, some of it and I'd go back to driving for a little while and then something happens. So right. Take another break. And you've been with us for? This month, will, the end of this month will be eight months. I've been oh, good. That is excellent. That is good. And this, this is your first time in Phoenix, you said? Yeah, it's my first time at the Phoenix Shower. Well, thankfully it's not too too hot for you. It's, it's been pretty what we would consider cool. So uh, it's, it's not it's too bad. It's not in the hundreds yet. It usually is this time of year. Oh, I know last weekend. It got pretty hot. It was in the high Yeah, it, yeah, it got up to like 95, 96. Because last Saturday, I was barbecuing behind my truck. Were you? What'd mm -hmm. you make? <laughs> um, I was barbecuing some chicken and some jalapeno sausage. Nice. Did you make the sausage or did you buy it? Yeah. I'm in the truck, I don't know if I found it. I know, sausage. right? I don't know if you did it while you were home or not. Mm -hmm. I do have uh, like a meat grinder and it's got an attachment to make sausage. I got like a deli sauce slicer. Yeah. So you got your truck all set up for you to be able to cook and... Yeah, but my smoker back at my parents' house in Louisiana, it's too big a bit on the back of my truck. Gotcha. Because it's like a six foot tall and smoker. So they... Are you from Louisiana? Right? Yeah, I'm from Louisiana. What part? Uh, central between Alexandria and Opelousa. I've never been to Louisiana. I need to get to go check it out. Maybe I'll do a little road trip. Like my grandparents live a mile away, one of my aunts and uncles, like three to town. Anybody in your family uh, in trucking too? No, nobody in my family is in trucking. My right. grandpa was actually the one that uh, suggested it. Yeah? Because like I grew up remote with his rent houses, and then uh, like I've always drove like his diesel pickup with his trailer, his his dump trailer, tractor, you know. And uh, so he just asked me one day, he was like, hey, you ever thought about uh, driving 18 wheels? I was like, no, never thought about it, but it seems interesting. Yeah. So you're going to go through the train the trainer class? Yes, I'm doing that tomorrow. It was supposed to be. Well, like my dispatch told me it was today, and so I went and asked Miss Chris Brown this morning. She was like, "No, I got moved to tomorrow." Yeah, typically is today. What What is interesting to you in being a trainer? Um, just always wanted to help somebody else further their education, dealing with career, whatever, or a hobby. So did anybody talk to you about the the training that you're going to go through tomorrow, what to expect? No. no. Like, all my dispatcher had told me was, he just told me, it was like, you need a dress nice. He was like, you don't have to wear a shirt and tie. I was like, it's just a class. What do I need a 
It, it's a good class. It goes over, you know, kind of the, the history of our training program, and what the expectations are. And there's a, a lot of good people share a lot of uh, stories, their training experiences, good and bad, and what they want to do differently while they're. That's what motivates a lot of people to become a trainer. You know, they might not have had the best experience, and yeah. they they say, you know, hey, if I ever get the opportunity, I want to I want to train, and I want to make sure that it's done correctly. So we have a a better than a trainer. Yeah, so it's you know pulling from all that experience and bringing that in and knowledge, and I think it'll be I think it'll be good for you. It'll be good, definitely good for the company. We need good, we need good trainers. And like, like I wasn't really thinking. Like I thought about maybe training, but then I was like, maybe not because I like doing solo, being by myself. And you have then, you have that option of you know not training every single month, or you know back to back students. You can say, hey, I'm going to train three students in a row, and then I'm going to take a little time off to drive solo. And, you know, you can kind of really break it up and design it how you want to do it, which fits your lifestyle, especially you're getting married. you got a lot of big things coming oh, up yeah. in and, your life. And then so she's trying to go back to school, so it's pretty much just me working to say yeah for the house. Good. Good. You got, you got a lot of stuff going on, so that's, that's good. good. A lot of positive things. You're around tomorrow. I have a yeah, class I'll be, of I'll be around. Yeah, CDL students. I wouldn't mind you having coming in and chat with my students and tell me what your experience has been and what to expect out on the road. We talk a lot about, you know, the transition of going through CDL school and then the actual lifestyle out the road and what they need to mentally prepare themselves for and be ready for. Where's your favorite place to uh, travel to? Where, where have you been? Do you think is your favorite state? Favorite place? Uh, well, I always like going back through Louisiana since I'm yeah. there. So I kind of know, like, okay, if I'm getting hungry, I know where to stop. Yeah, how far you're home, it is. right? <laughs> like, if I'm going from. If I'm on ITN going from like Houston and I gotta go through Louisiana, because like sometimes they send me to Georgia, it's kind of awful. So I know, like, okay, by the time I go from Houston to here, do my little 30, I got a designated 30 minute break spot. Sure. So give me some fresh food in, give me a little plate <laughs> lunch. I get some extra for the fridge for the week. Yeah, exactly. Get the road. That's why I'd like to travel to Louisiana that, to enjoy the food. Yeah, my dispatcher. He, like, he'll text me sometimes. Hey, I'm in Louisiana. I'm like, what you doing there? <laughs> um, I was just like, oh, I went there. Went to Lafayette, uh, Mardi Gras. Yeah, nice. And, like, I brought them, like, whenever I was passing through, coming back to... Uh, Katie uh, So I picked them up a link of boudin and another I'm going to have to try this boudin. <laughs> you got to know where to get it from. Yeah, well, I'm going to have to call you up whenever we, we travel over that way. I'm going to be like, hey, Justin, you remember me? You took me for a ride. I'm going to say, tell me where I need to go. And, uh, like another time, I had brought him back a bag of uh, pork rinds. Yeah. Like every now and then I'll bring like a little snack back. Well, sounds like you have a good relationship with your driver manager. Me and him, we both kind of have like the same type of personality. We like yeah. to joke around a lot, so we'll call each other up just joking around a little bit. Good. And then like me, I need to give me another load or got this going on. You guys built, you built that relationship to where you guys can joke around but still take care of business. Safety driver attention guy. When I got started, was a uh, Mr. Howard mm -hmm. Sexton, and he was the one that told me it's like you and your dispatcher have to have a good relationship. Yeah, you do. If not, it's important. It's not gonna work. Relationship building oh, yeah. is 
super important. So he understands what your needs are. You understand where he's coming from so you can run your miles and make your money and everybody's happy. What do you think one thing you'll teach your students about um, being out on the road? Um, oh, I know like before we get in my truck and everything, Try to find out what their situation is. Sure. So that way we can kind of, I can help them. So that way I know if, like, hey, they're straight out of school, they don't know anything. So I know like where to start training if they have a few years' experience, but been out of the truck for a year, or whatever. Like I was. Mm -hmm. um, that way I'm like, okay, well he knows how to do most of it. And then I'm going to teach them how I run. I usually like to start, depending on where I'm at and if I have a load, uh, I usually like to start about between 3 to 4.30 in the morning. Because mm -hmm. I've always been a morning person. And then that way by the time you're out of hours, it's about 2.33 in the afternoon. You don't have to fight anybody about a parking right. spot, there's no way for a shower, you can get something to eat, and by the time you're... So you plan out, teaching them how to plan out their yeah. entire day. and then by the time they get back in their truck to relax, then people start rolling in. Yep, you already got a spot. Yeah, you can pick whatever spot you want. You can get a good night's sleep. Well, you must go to bed off early for getting up 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I know the late thing for this, like this week, sitting at the yard on my truck's in the shop. You're probably ready to go. You're probably ready to... Oh, I've been ready to go. Like, I try to... I try to get my dispatcher to give me a load, like, especially for, like, weekends. Mm -hmm. Like, Friday morning. I'm like, okay, give me... So you can keep rolling Give me a one long load or multiple loads to last me through the weekend where I'm not sitting. Yeah. Sometimes you get, sometimes you don't. But right. It just depends on what area I'm at. But they know that you're available if they didn't get you that second load, that they could yeah. call on you to come over, pick it up, and get going. Okay. How, how important do you think that being a problem solver is while you're out on the road? Uh, problem solver, you gotta think of solutions like very right. quickly. There's you always have the support of your of your terminal, but being able like it seems like you were able to really problem solve that whole entire situation. But yeah, problem solving, you gotta be you know, any toes on the road. You have to be. And yeah. like a lot of times, like I'll have something go on or. Uh, like the other week, I was at a shipper trying to pick up a load, and I was, and they were trying, my dispatcher was trying to get me down from Dallas down to Katy to give me the load to get me here, because they were trying to get me here for that class uh, last week. Come on. So, uh, like I called them up, I was like, hey, it's taking these people eight hours to do a live flow. Right. And they had two four clips picking up two pallets at a time. I was like, can we, you know, kind of get another guy to pick this load up and get me another load to run me down on Katie so I can try to beat that fire. But it didn't happen. No. But I've, I'm usually having to do problem solving seems like you're always thinking of ways to make the situation smoother and better for everybody involved. Depending on the type of load and how early I can get there. Like I've picked up loads like a day early and delivered a day early. Right. You're proactive. You're extremely proactive. Because like I'll call like I'll call my dispatcher and he'll tell me, well, we got us an email and they got us an email. Right. So, it could to be get a, approval. It could be a whole day thing before I get back. Sure. I'm like, it doesn't oh, hurt to ask, right? No. Nah, nah. 
the worst they can tell me is no. Tell you no. But most of the time they're like, yeah, if you can be here, come on. That's a, that, that would be another great lesson for you to, when you're training, to talk about your trainees, how to be proactive and how to problem solve. And like, it's, like you said, like it doesn't hurt to ask. The worst no. thing that they can say is no. Keep the company making money. Working as a team and get the job done. That's what it's all about. So like, so like my dad's my he told me, it's like, it's like, you know what you're doing. I don't have to babysit you. He's like, he's like, the only time I really hear him from is if he's got a pre-planned farming. He'll call me up and like, hey, I got you this pre-planned picking up here, delivering here. And my first questions are, where is it picking up? When's it got to pick up? Oh, where and where and when does it deliver? Yep. Now I'm taking the class tomorrow to be a trainer. Like, how much further up? Like, can I go in the company? You just, you just gotta have that conversation. Like, what do you want to do? Do you want to be? Do you want to come in the office? Do you want to do that type of work? Do you want to like what? What exactly do you want to do? So, as the company evolves and things change, there's there's lots of opportunities for you here with us. So, there's lots of things. After a trainer, like Jr. that works in. Uh, DDM for refer division. He used to be um, used to be a driver, and then he came in the office. And then some people come in and get that experience in the office, and they go back out on the road. And there's just a lot of different things that you can do. So don't limit yourself. Um, keep keep your eyes open to what's going on out there, and a lot of experience of people have come in off the road into the office. So it's like I know Paul. I don't know his last name from a uh, Genitus. Yeah, up in uh, Indy. Indy. Yeah. Like he's called me a couple times because uh, since I have my diploma to work on, so he's called yeah. me and then called um, Hugo at Katie about yeah. maybe seeing about getting me in the shop. But Being a you can be a mentor. You can be, you know, they have senior drivers where they kind of where other drivers will call you for advice or you know just being able to be out there to say hey. Justin, what, what would you do? I'm in this situation. And you'll get that with your trainees too. They'll come back to you. Once you're once they're off your truck, you'll still have a connection with them. They're always constantly going to be reaching out to you like, hey, I need your advice. Or I need you to help me walk me through this. Uh, I'm in this situation. What should I do? So, yeah. Another thing I would suggest doing is once you set a goal for yourself, to sit down and talk with your DDM and your terminal manager. Yep. Let them know what your goals are and then ask them you know what steps you can take to reach your goals and just constantly keep them in the loop with what you really want to do because if you don't say what you want to do if you don't ask for advice nobody, and if nobody know. knows then yeah. how are you ever going to get where you want to go you definitely have options so you just need to like said just sit down talk to somebody and say hey this is where i'm at i want to drive for this long but what are my options could i go into the shop could i come into the office what's open what's available and job shadow with them sit there and watch them what they do for a while you know sit down watch your driver manager watch what howard does you know what i mean and, and just see and kind of soak up all that that information howard got, howard got moved to uh, olive branch oh that's right that's right i forgot about that yeah that's good that's so right any good. last words leah last words justin give me a <laughs> what did Justin say? I was saying, I was, okay, I was saying what, what you going to do? Give me a trailer load full of $100 bills? <laughs> we had great conversation. You definitely made me hungry for some Louisiana food, so I appreciate it. No Thank you so much.